There everybody, Jim from Sprague Wood Turning. This week we are going to take some of these pine cones and combine them with some awesome tinted resin from Designer Epoxy to make a really cool covered dish. Stick around, this one is awesome. All right, so I just wanted to do a pine cone thing. These are actually white pine, and uh, they come right off of my property here. And what I've done is, after I pick these up, I put them in my kiln. They're in there for probably a couple of weeks. And then I put them inside of my toaster oven and tried to bake them with them standing up like this. And the reason for that is that the pitch will run out of them and then set settle on the little petals here and then you can clean it off and then that way the majority of the pitch or sap whatever you want to call it is out of these and then you know it should make for a cleaner look so i've gone ahead clean these basically off as good as i can i mean there's some areas where you're just not going to get it all and then uh the last thing before we do anything here is just take the air hose and blow these all out make sure that you know we're not contaminating our inlay or our resin with all kinds of loose debris I want this whole thing to actually look like pine cone and resin so what I'm going to do this is a piece of maple and uh, I'm just going to glue this on the bottom that way we've got a good solid piece of wood when it comes to uh, mounting it for hollowing. I also want to cut these little ends off here because it's you know you've got a lot of empty space here so I'd sooner see the petals you know kind of here if you will. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put some cone on the very bottom and then I'm going to put a spacer in here. I know that'll make a lot of people happy. So I'm going to put a spacer in here. I don't know how it's not going to be very big, but anyway, we'll be able to save a bit of resin there. And um, yeah, I, and I'm kind of, I really want to make this tight so that these don't float up when we put the resin in. So anyway, I changed my mind, as you can see. Um, I don't know, it's just not going to work. I want some cone on the very bottom of this piece, like I said. And then I was going to put a spacer in, but I mean, there's just really not much room. So I don't really see the point in it. And then I'm worried about the spacer affecting our design. So that's why I'm going this way, if you're curious. I am trying to make sure these are out against the outside. I don't know if this is going to float. I'm assuming that it probably is going to. Do you know why you should own a green hammer? Because it's so hideous, nobody will ever steal it. There, that should keep them from floating. Let's mix up some resin. This week we're going to be using Designer Epoxy's Deep Casting Epoxy. Perfect choice for this. 
And the main reason why I wanted to use the deep cast is because it has such a long open time that it will migrate into this pine cone and hopefully stabilize any areas that aren't exactly the best. Uh, you know, I didn't stabilize these pieces and I really wanted to see how it was going to react with the long open time of the deep cast and it actually worked fantastic. So I have no idea if this is enough, but I guess we will find out. And uh, unfortunately, we're not really going to be able to see what's going on down in there too. So let's see. There, I thought I'd turn my light off. It's making things kind of yellowy. Uh, it's going to need that again. So I'll mix that up and I'll bring it back when I'm all done mixing it. All right, here's the second pour. There, I'd say that's almost the perfect amount. So I will give very carefully, put this in the pressure pot, try not to stir it up, and then we'll see you in three days. Oh, yeah. It has been three days and we are out of the pressure pot and I'd have to say, just on looking what I'm seeing here, that we've made purple, <laughs> which uh, of course a reddish color and a bluish color will make purple. So let's get it out of here and see what it looks like. Well, it definitely looks purpley. Uh, there's a lot of really different color separation in it so you know I'm, I'm thinking this thing is going really nice but let's see all right that wasn't too bad that's interesting that you would have a void down there Oh yeah, this is going to be really cool looking. Alright, let's get the center, which is right here. I don't want to drill into this too far. Uh, the plan was to get rid of this maple piece on the bottom, but you never know. It might end up in our design. We'll have to see when we cross that bridge when we get there. I got the center finder from Amazon. Uh, one thing to note, uh, make sure you pay attention to the size before you order one. This is a 10 inch and I was looking for a 12 or 14. That's pretty good. So I don't know if you noticed when I took the casting out of the bucket, but there was actually kind of a more reddish side to the bucket than the other side. Now, I anticipated these colors totally blending together. Uh, the only way around that, of course, would have been to wait 12, 14 hours and then combine them or, you know, maybe even longer than that. But like I said, I, I wanted that resin to penetrate into those pine cones. So that's why I did it in this way there certainly i could have waited but you know i was really hoping that resin would stabilize these cones and for the most part that's exactly what it did so with all of that said the next time so the banksia pod vase that i did on my channel and is actually the most popular video on my channel there was a spacer put down the center of it and the pour was done exactly the same as this, but yet we didn't really get the color separation like we did on the Banksia pod vase. Now, the reason for that, I believe, is the fact that there is, in the Banksia pod vase video, there is a spacer that I put in, in the very center. 
and that forced the epoxy to go around the outside of it and the and the, the colors blended actually quite nicely so i really think that that's why it ended up being like that and we will do another one in the future with something else and i will put that spacer in there and it'd be very interesting to see if we can get that color separation like i did on the banksy pod vase instead of what it is here even though i absolutely totally love this color i would have probably have liked to seen a little more color variation without with within the piece as far as the turning is concerned you can see i'm using mostly the hercules here i did use the gouge to cut back the wood uh it's a good thing that that void why for whatever reason why the void was there you know epoxy is the strangest thing it, it it just really has its own mind and it does whatever it wants i swear that's the way it is and so i was gonna basically turn away that portion anyway so that way i didn't have to fill any holes i was able to turn that hole away Here we're going to get a real good look at the surface and you know after I after I turn the lathe off here I'm like yeah wow this is really really cool just kind of waterfalls almost going around the pine cones So I'm a bit torn at the moment uh, this really I thought this was going to be a really cool uh, small hollow form but you know now that I've got it kind of shaped the way that I do I, I actually like this maple base on here uh, you know I'm a bowl turner through and through and I mean it, it just it really appeals to me to do something with this instead of rounding this off and, and turning this into a hollow form and then getting rid of this I don't know I just I'm, I'm kind of really torn I, I wanted a piece that was all pine cone and resin but i don't think that we're really doing this justice by rounding this over and then just open it making an opening in the top and doing a hollow form so what i think that i'm going to do is i'm going to make another uh covered dish but i'm going to go in we haven't really got much of the pine cone exposed on the outside so I'll probably leave this as it is and I will go in and come out and then flatten this off and then part this piece off and then we'll have a little dish. I just, I think that it's actually probably one of the better ways to use this pine cone. And I know there's going to be people say, oh, you should have put a spacer in there. But you know, I, I just didn't really know for sure what it was going to be. I mean, I had made up my mind originally that it was going to be a hollow form. And as I shown in the beginning that, you know, putting a spacer in there just didn't work for me so you know that's what I think I'm going to do and um, I think that it's going to be a really cool covered dish the other thing too is uh, the the uh, the pearl in this is just amazing it really is very very nice it is going to be spectacular when it's polished that's for sure now, of course, when we part this off, it may affect our pine cones the way that they line up, but it won't be anything like we did with the globes. So my wife and I have been fighting about this piece all week, actually. <laughs> she thinks that by leaving the base on the bottom of this, that I actually really, it's really taking away from the piece. And I think that it adds to it. I think that it gives it some elevation and it almost puts it on a pedestal, if you will. So she thinks that I should put it back on the lathe and take that 
base off. So you know what we're going to do? I'm going to leave it up to you guys. If you can comment down below to leave the base on or take the base off, that would be appreciated. And I'll go with the majority and I'll put it on the lathe and I will whittle away the base. If you want it gone and I'll leave it on if you want it to stay. I'll leave it up to you guys. Don't let me down. So this is the Firmager parting tool and this is a really good tool if you don't want to lose much material. The only knock that I really have on this tool is that, you know, you can go in about an inch, two inches max. If you get in too far, you, you lose mechanical advantage and then the tool can actually get pulled out of your hand. So, you know, typically I only go about an inch in with it and then I use a hacksaw like I'm using here to cut the rest of the piece off. I put up a bit of a fight, but eventually I get it. I think that's an old hacksaw blade too. So there you go. There's our lid, and uh, I think that's the best way to go about doing this. I figured before we moved outboard that it was probably best to take out this, the very center of this piece. So I think that's about uh, one inch bit, and then I go up to one and three quarter inch bit before we move outboard, just to make it easier to uh, take out the center of this piece little too small for any coring. I know there's going to be some questions about that, but I think it's just too small for corn. So if you happen to have missed it, I did upload a new inlay video on Tuesday. So that's why it's important to have your bell notification on and I inlaid some purple diopside uh, kind of ironic because this is a purpley piece as well so if I think about it I will link that at the end of this video and um, yeah it's been it's been a pretty popular video lots of people are liking the purple diopside and uh, there's one thing that I wasn't aware of because I'm not a real rock and mineral guy but uh, purple or diopside comes in many different colors so it, uh, it can certainly give you a, a nice palette if you want it to, to inlay some natural materials. So just working on this piece one little bite at a time and eventually you can take these long sweeping cuts like you see me doing there. Uh, the the deep cast here works so great that, you know, I did not have to do any filling with CA at all or, or the UV resin or anything. So, you know, it, it, it did its job and I'm, I'm really happy that uh, with the overall outcome of this piece because it's, it's actually quite a very, very beautiful covered dish. I'm really liking the look of these, the inside of those pine cones. So when you take the lid off, that's that would be one of the first things you would see. It's going to cut down on the size of it, but I think that it's a really, really cool feature. Uh, you know, I don't know. I just, I'm thinking that I want to leave it this thick. I like big beefy turnings and this is kind of kind of really up my alley but I don't know I might go a little bit thinner so that we still keep the vast majority of this but you know maybe I don't know maybe a sixteenth of an inch and then uh, that's probably about it uh, this is a really cool effect it literally just looks like flowers really 
with the resin sitting on top of the, uh, the pine cone petals. I know there is a specific name for it. But uh, yeah, I'm really grooving the look of this. So I think I'm just going to clean it up and sand it. And then it's, you know, we'll move on to the lid. What would you have done in there? That's the question. I just don't want to lose that. So design over form, design over functionality. Uh, you know, it's always one of those things where it kind of gets me a little bit. But when it comes to the resin and the way that this piece looks as it sits, I will take design over anything uh, to to get rid of those that veining almost on the inside of this piece certainly wouldn't have done it any justice at all so that's why i decided to leave it that way and go in that direction uh, sometimes you just got to leave the pretty stuff be and the function can sit in the back seat So I've made the decision to stick with the, the beefier, heavier turning. And now I'm just working in the transition area or the belly of the bowl. And, you know, like I said, I think it was the previous video that I did, that, you know, 50% of your time when you're, when you're turning the interior, especially on a piece that has straight walls like this and then down into the flat bottom, you're going to spend a lot of time in here. And I know that a lot of wood turners struggle in this area area with, with tear out and, you know, it just creates a lot of sanding. So, you know, it, but it's really worth your while to work on your tool work so that you don't have to deal with any of that when it comes to that situation. So before we do any sanding, I looked at the base and it was, at that point it was kind of straight. And I'm like, nah, I need to give this a little more curvature. So that's what I'm doing there. Just, I figured, oh yeah, you guys can't really see all the walls. So I moved the camera over. And I believe this is the straight tool. That's what I'm using here. And it's got a small little cutter, so it works well to get into those tight little areas. So what we're going to do is sand the interior of this piece. We're not going to bother um, sanding the outside yet, just because... Basically, I'm, I want to fit the lid and the body together, and then we'll do that all at one time. Here I'm cutting in where the tenon from the lid is going to fit into the, to the body. Uh, when I first started, I didn't have the camera. I looked back and said, oh yeah, I should probably turn the camera off. Uh, it, was, uh, you know, it was one of those days. And I just wanted to, just a little bit, of, I think that was about 600 grit sandpaper, just to take away any sharp edges. And this is why you should always hold on to your smaller buffs as they wear out, because you're able to get them inside in small little places like this. And there you go. That's ready for finish. Now it's time to work on the lid. And to do that, I'm going to use my vacuum chuck. And you'll see me. It wasn't, it didn't have to be crucially lined up perfectly, because like I said, we're going to fit the, the lid and the body together. But you know, best to get it as close as you can. And so I did the inside bottom of the lid first and then of course all the steps that i normally would do we'll sand it we'll buff it we'll clean it with denatured alcohol and then of course i will cut in where the where the tenon is and then we'll be able to fit the lid to the base i should mention that everything was sanded from 60 to 800 and then buffed All right, so now it's time to cut the tenon to fit inside the body. And it, again, you know, you gotta be go really slow with this. I do have my caliper set to the inside dimension on the body. And you'll see that I eventually end up missing it yet again. Here, you know, the fit is still a little bit too large. Gotta take a little bit away. And you know, it's just the slightest touch and now it's loose. It's still fine there. <laughs> double check my measurement 
and you can see, I mean, I am not taking a whole lot off there. And there it is. It's going to be too loose. <laughs> Never fails. So I just took a little bit of 600 and cut down those sharp edges as well. That epoxy, when it's freshly cut with the parting tool, can be quite sharp. So it's best to take away those uh, those sharp edges. And I just used a couple pieces of the, uh, the blue kitchen towel here. And that really held that lid quite well. Just cutting away the excess. If you leave that on there and turn the lathe on, the tool could grab it and it could actually pull the lid off. And that is certainly you don't want to have happen. So if you, if you watch what I'm doing here, I'm going from the top down onto the body. When I'm working on the body, I don't, I stop where the where the lid meets the body i don't typically go past it it's a little easier when things are the same size but until you get there it's best to always go from the top of the lid onto the body and vice versa when you're going the other way but stop short of the of where that crack is where the where the lid is for this piece i decided that i had enough thickness on the very top that i would actually make uh, incorporate a little handle to grab hold of to pull the lid off. This thing is, I believe, around seven and a half inches, so it's a little hard to to grasp that if you've got smaller hands. So that's I'm glad that I went this direction and not made another finial or a knob because you know my my finial and knob game isn't exactly the best. If you've been here for a while, you'll certainly know that. <laughs> so I think that this was the right choice and uh, i'm really happy with the results of it just thinning it down and you know it's not very large but it's large enough that you can just grab a hold of that after that shop towel is removed the 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 fit of the lid to the body is nice so you don't really need something substantial to grab a hold of So now that all the tool work is done on the outside of the piece, I proceed to sanding and again from 60 to 800. And then you'll see me buff it and then use the denatured alcohol as well. And uh, just getting ready for our first coat finish. All right, best part. Uh, this is Waterlux Gloss, original VOC. And it's going to turn this into an amazing looking piece. Well, what do you think of that? Wow. Really, really cool effect with the very top of those pine cones looking like flowers. That's exactly what the resin, the pigment sitting right on the very top of them. Very, very cool. There's the very bottom. I think this one's gonna be going into my personal collection. Now I want to keep this together so that we can look at it to see what it's going to look like kind of in its finished state. Tomorrow I'll take it apart and we'll do some buffing and uh, we'll do the inside. One coat might do it. Wow. Crazy resin on the top. See you tomorrow. Alright, so it's the next day and I'm just going to buff like I normally do and then we'll remove the lid. And that way, at least I've got this side buffed here. Just hope this doesn't fly off when I'm doing this. I haven't mentioned it, but that is Tripoli Buffing Compound if you are new here. And I use it between all coats of finish with resin. Let's see if I can use the air gun to get underneath this lip here. Where I put that, um, that kitchen towel on there. And then the lid on top of it, there's spaces between it. So I wonder if this will be able to blow it off here. It's moving. Yeah, 
I had to wait for my air compressor to shut off. Let's see. Get this now. There it is. Too easy. I was a little concerned about the finish kind of sticking to this, but uh, it doesn't seem to be too bad. I'll probably just give it a quick buffing here, and then uh, we'll be able to get the next coat of finish on, or I guess it's first coat. All right, this is uh, Waterlux Gloss. There you go. Wow, do I love that. See more of these in the future. And I know there's going to be a lot of comments where that should have been on the outside. Maybe I should have trimmed off the, the, uh, the pine cone petals or needles or whatever you want to call them. And then had it more to the outside. But you know what? I'm good with it on the inside too. Beautiful piece. Let's look, uh, let's see what it's like under the uh, lid. Again, it just, it looks like flowers. Flowers with brown tips and then all the, all those pearl pigments sitting on them. It's just a really, really cool look. That's my air hose. If you can hear that. I just love this. All right, if there's another coat, I will do it the same way. Uh, so tomorrow when this sets, I'll do the top. That way it's the same as the body. And I'm thinking one coat on the inside is really all that's needed. I might throw another one on there. I don't know. See you when we're doing the bottom. All right, so we're getting ready to do the very bottom on this. And I just wanted to share something with you. So I've found that this is still kind of weeping sap. And I suspect that that comes from, or I should say pitch, that comes from maybe not having the, um, the pine cones in the toaster oven long enough. So what I, do, what I will do in the future is put the pine cones, like I said, upside down, and then, you know, cook them for whatever, 20 minutes, and then let them cool down, brush off any of that pitch, Flip them over and keep doing that until you don't get any more. Then I'm sure that you won't be able to deal. You wouldn't have to deal with this. It's not a big deal anyway because it just brushes off. Like it's it's almost like it's uh, it's almost like it's set. So it's not a big deal at all. I'll just keep brushing it off until it stops, and then that's that's it. So more time in the oven, and if you're curious, I think I cook these at about 200 Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. Uh, and You know, I, I thought that that would probably be it, but obviously there was more pitch in there that needed to come out. So I will certainly keep that in the back of my mind. And I've actually collected up a whole bunch more of my property before the snow hits here. Let's have a last little chat about this week's awesome covered dish. Well, all right, that's it for the video. Uh, what I'm going to do, these are string lights. You can get them anywhere. I think my wife got these off of Amazon. I'll throw those inside of this at the end for the rotating footage, and it should be, should be pretty neat to see what it looks like uh, inside of this piece. So speaking of this piece, this ended up being four inches tall and six inches across. And, you know, as you can see, it's, it's a bit of a stretch to try and grab that, so that's why... I put that little knob on there. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what you think about that wood foot on there or get rid of it. 
Uh, it's, I don't know, it's just a beautiful piece. I'm gonna take this lid off so we can have a look at this. I mean, the pine cone, again, it's so shiny. It's a really gray day here, so I need some lights on to show this. Uh, I just really, really like the look of the pine cone on the inside with those with that straight veining. Uh, maybe what I will do next time is cut cut it off on one side and then that way it's on the outside of the piece. Regardless, I, what I really like about the sides of this, it almost looks like the resin created like a waterfall around all of those pine cones. Just a really neat effect. And uh, we will definitely be seeing a lot more pine cone in the future. Here is the very base. And if I, I haven't done a pole on here before, so I'll have to figure out how to do that. If I can figure out how to do the pole, I will put that um, anyway, some, somewhere. And then that way you can look at it and you can say yay or nay, or please leave a comment down below. Uh, I don't know, I just, I think it was calling for it. I really do, I really do. Just to give it that elevation, give it some elegance. As far as the lid is concerned, again, the real benefit of this is to have all of those flower-like structures on there with the resin sitting or the, the pigment sitting on top of them. Just gives it a really, again, sorry, it's so shiny. Just gives it a really cool effect. There is the, it's not very big, not very big at all. I could have gone a little, could have gone a little deeper and I kind of wish that maybe I had of a little bit just to give you a little more easier to grab a hold of. I can do it if you've got, I don't have much for fingernails, but if you have some fingernails, you'll be able to grab it quite easily. Uh, anyway, a very cool project and uh, I'm very curious to think about what you think about foot or no foot. Uh, so don't forget about uh, putting designer epoxy down in the comments for your shot at winning a three gallon kit at 80,000. We are now over 78,000. Uh, it's been a little slow this past week. That's that's fine going into Christmas. I realize people got a lot on their plates and probably the last thing they're, they're doing is watching YouTube. But uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. It certainly helps out the channel. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. And of course, the thumbs up is always a bonus as well. Next week, we're gonna rescue some firewood. That's what it's gonna be. So far, everything is looking good. Uh, it's going to be one of the largest resin pours, or it might be the largest resin pour that I've done to date. So please come on back for that. All right, well, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget about uh, Tuesday's video. I will link it down in this, in, um, at the end of this video, actually right here. And I'll try and put up the Banksia pod vase as well. That way you can see how, what I'm talking about with the different colors and how it flows around all those little pods. All right, well, that's it. Take care, stay safe. Don't forget the bell. Please share my videos with your friends. I'll see you next week.